So these models do provide a common language. It's the language that we use to talk about the crisis since 2008. The language is the language of inadequacy of aggregate demand. When we talk about inadequacy of aggregate demand as being the problem in the last few years, the discussion then goes a few steps forward about, you know, why was there inadequate ag aggregate demand? Well, we had a financial crisis, and, and we've now made the Mundell Fleming or the ISLM model more sophisticated so that we can integrate financial crisis into the model and see how a financial crisis can contribute to an aggregate demand problem, which then produces the kind of recession that we've seen. Another aspect of the last few years is that, is that people, um, because housing prices fell, people felt poor and they cut back on their spending. And this model very naturally and very beautifully explains why that would lead to a, a recession. And it explains it in terms that people learn in their uh, undergraduate uh, college uh, courses. So in terms of languages, that's one of the big successes of the model, is that it fits in naturally into an existing language system so that people can easily talk about it. There is this little transient problem of the mathematics of it and the people who are working on them initially get a little bit confused about what, what it means. That's just a matter of time.